everyone, it's Miss Allison. Hope you're doing well. Let's take a look at how to do the literary devices portion of your active reading for night. So our directions here read, as you read, please note places where Vizel uses literary devices to add impact to his narrative. Look for similes, metaphors, imagery, sensory detail, symbolism, etc. Then copy and paste the sentence or passage with the literary device below. Underline the device and discuss what impact it has on the reader. So let's break down those steps a little bit. My goal is to go through while I'm reading and look for ways or places that the author uses language a little bit differently to accomplish something. If I'm unfamiliar with literary devices, we have covered some this year, but if you're like, I need a refresher, take a look at this document here. It has everything you could need. It has lots of different terms that you are familiar or unfamiliar, examples, videos, all sorts of things linked here. So that could be helpful to you, okay? Next, I'm going to go to my text and I'm going to look for these things. So as I was reading, I looked for things that stuck out to me. I chose to make them pink. You don't have to do that, but it might help you uh, make it a color that is meaningful to you. So this first one I had here, no one may speak of the dead. No one may interpret their mutilated dreams and visions. That was really powerful to me. The idea of dreams and visions being mutilated to me, that was imagery. So you can see here, I popped this in here. I underlined the part that I thought was figurative language or literary device. And then the impact here, I want me to stop and reflect. Dreams and visions to me are usually something with hope. They're usually something good, light, happy, and to have them be mutilated is pretty powerful. So I said it stood out because it drives home the point that those that died suffered loss of their dreams and visions along with their lives. So it wasn't just a life loss. It was a dream. It was a hope. It was a future. Okay. Let's look at one more together to make sure you're understanding this concept. So the next one I found as I was reading through. This one, the fiery altar upon which the history of our people and future of mankind were meant to be sacrificed. Again, that's a really powerful image. It is um, symbolic in the fact that he's saying there's an actual, he, he's trying to make it sound like there's an actual fiery altar where these people were. It's not, it's symbolic. That's a powerful use of language there. So here um, I put that sentence, I underlined all of it, and then it's either a metaphor or imagery. You could say it's either one of those things. Um, remember, metaphor is comparison, imagery is painting a picture. This has such a strong religious visual, like an ancient funeral pyre or some sort of primitive ritual. It speaks to how the cultures Germans were about their beliefs and actions against the Jews. So this image is really powerful in the fact, and that's my response there, but if I explain it, it's just powerful in the fact that it's thinking about this almost as like a, a normal ceremony, right, within their beliefs or within their culture, which it was not, right? And so just another way to go deeper into the thoughts there, okay? And then the third one you can take a look at here. I hope this is helpful to get an example, but the idea is as you're reading anything that stands out to you, any language that he uses that you think, man, that's interesting, I would say mark it, put it down, and then this chart could help you decide what it is if you're not sure, and then to go ahead and interpret it. Why was that impactful or powerful to you as you were reading? All right, guys, good luck.